All right, greetings, fellow RC enthusiasts. Uh, I'm going to show you today how I go about setting up my Radio Master with an Ultrix, or really any of the the UMX birds that uh, Horizon Hobby makes. So uh, let's go ahead and first off, I'm going to make sure that uh, this is actually bound to a Spectrum transmitter because I don't want to make it appear. All right, so yep, we are bound to this DXE. All right, let's get that out of the way. Bring in the, the uh, Radio Master. Okay, so what, what we're gonna do first, what I like to do first is, is create a model. So I'm going to hit the model button I'm going to scroll down to the next available slot. I'm going to hit enter and create a model. Then what I'm going to do is hit return until I get to the model 12. We're not going to name it anything right now because that just takes time. And I'm going to hit the system button. And we're going to see, we're going to get to the tools menu. Right now we're on the tools menu. If that doesn't pop up, you're going to hit either the forward or reverse buttons to get there. Uh, it eventually goes all the way back around. All right, so now we're to tools. And what I want to do is scroll down to wizard. Or scroll back up to it if you pass it. And hit enter. And it's going to automatically run that wizard. We're going to select plane. And for, the, for this, we're just going to select all the defaults. So we're just going to hit forward, 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 and forward. So this comes up with a with a, a model or, or it shows this a summary. So our throttles on channel three, ailerons on channel one, rudder is on channel four, and elevators on channel two. And I know right offhand, a bunch of you Spectrum guys are like, wait a second, we do T-A-E-R. And don't worry about it. It, it's not something you have to mess with. Your receiver is still going to get the TAER signals. Uh, the multi-protocol module inside this transmitter is smart enough to do channel, tra channel translation. But by default, um, the Radio Master radio just configures everything internally as an AETR model. All right, so going to go ahead and hit confirm. Oh, I hit I accidentally hit that, so I'm going to hit return to get back out of it. Return. All right. So now we're in the model again, model 12. We're actually in the flight mode. So to get back to, to configuring it, we're going to hit model again. And then we're going to hit, now that we're on model 12, we're going to go forward. And if we go to scroll or, or go forward a few times, we'll see our inputs are already configured in that same order, aileron elevator throttle rudder and our mixers are also pre-configured so right here is where i like to go ahead and add my throttle cut in um, so we're going to go do, down to we're going to scroll down to channel three and we're going to long hold and we're going to insert after and we're going to name this uh, cut Oop. someday they'll come up with a better way of naming these things instead of scrolling endlessly <sighs> dang it alright well enough and then we're gonna hit return when we're done naming it it's gonna be named that I don't really care I don't ever see that name <clears throat> so we're gonna change our source to max which just means 100% and we're gonna change the weight to negative 100% or negative 100 
And then we're gonna come down here and we're gonna assign it a switch. So like spectrum uh, radios, you just click on the enter or click on the area and then you flip the switch. So right here, I want it to be on F. Cut is gonna be here towards me. So S uh, switch F in the down position. Hit enter. And then we're going to change the multiplex. And we're gonna change it to replace. So that means if that switch is in, in uh, switched on, it's going to automatically override that channel or override that mix and put negative 100 into the into the, uh, uh, the 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 channel. And we can actually see that now if we keep hitting exit or return, and then we scroll over to our channel. Oh, oh, sorry scroll over to our channel monitor. We see our channel three is at negative 100, even though our throttle is moving up and down. If we enable the throttle, now we see along with our ailerons, elevator, and rudder. So we see all four channels are going. Okay, so now let's go ahead and bind it. So we're gonna hit return again, then hit model. Then we're gonna scroll to the right. And we're gonna get to the setup name or to the to the setup screen. And we're gonna scroll all the way down. Uh, and we are looking for internal RF. In uh, on this four in one module, it's the internal uh, module that we're gonna or we're you going to use to connect up to our DSMX. So we're going to switch this to multi from off, hit enter. We're going to change this to, we're going to scroll backwards to DSM. All right, and then the subtype. So this does DSM2 and DSMX. So 2-1-F means, from what I gather, means uh, DSM 2, 11 milliseconds. Um, DSM 2, 22 milliseconds. Uh, DSM X, 11 milliseconds. And then DSM X, 22 milliseconds. Okay, and so we're going to choose that one. We're going to leave everything else the same. Channels 1 through 16 is fine. Also, if you notice here, our, this is actually the 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 status line from our multi protocol module. So it is expecting signals to come into it as AETR. So all this all the signals that go into that module are going to be transmitted on uh, ailerons on channel one, uh, elevator on channel two, throttle on channel three, and rudder on channel four. Once it gets in there, then the multi -pro protocol module is smart enough to know okay, I need to swap, when I send the model, or when I send the signal out to the model, I want to send throttle on channel one, and I want to ch send ailerons on channel two, and elevator on channel three, and, and uh, it's going to continuously send the uh, rudder on channel four. So that's, that's where I was talking about. You can leave the receiver model as zero, zero, or if you want to, you can choose a random ID or, or the next available ID. You know, one, uh, zero through 63 is there enough available numbers. It allows you to reuse the same um, receiver. Like you could have different profiles for the same plane on this radio. And it, this both profiles could um, connect up with that same receiver if they wanted to. Um, typically I don't do that. So, uh, I just, I just leave it at zero. Okay. So I apologize in advance if my dog starts whining when this happens because he loves this plane. This is his plane actually. Uh, it's his toy that he chases around. So when he hears the binding signal, he'll, he tends to whine. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and power up. 
let's scroll over here. So we're in bind mode now. Let me go ahead and hit enter on bind. All right, and we have bound. Okay, so now let's go ahead and So we've got our aileron or uh, elevators. We've got our ailerons, but they're reversed. And we do have our rudder. Uh, it's going to be a little hard to show this. We do have our. And our rudder is reversed. Oh, and I guess we should check that our. Throttle cut is working correctly, and it is. Okay. Okay, so channel reversing. That's actually pretty pretty simple. We're gonna hit return to get out of here. All right, hit the model button again, forward. We're gonna go past setup, flight modes, uh, inputs, mixes, and we're gonna go to outputs. All right, so we know uh, this is AETR, our ailerons are, are switched up, so we're gonna go to, we're gonna edit this one. We're gonna hit enter and then edit. And we're gonna come down here and we're gonna change the direction. Okay, so. So now when I go right, the right el uh, elevon comes up left that way you know, we can switch it back and I can show you okay uh, right and it going down which is incorrect so let's switch it back so that one's already taken care of we hit return return get back to the other one uh, our rudder was changed and that's on channel 4 so when we go down here we edit hit enter to change the direction now we are back to, um, we should be correct. So we got the correct up the elevator, correct ailerons. We're just going to assume the rudder's fine. And throttle was already right. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is set up our expo. Um, I fly this down near the ground because my little corgi chases the plane. So I like plenty of expo. Uh, you will probably want yours different, uh, you know, because everybody's different. All right. So again, hit the model button. Uh, and you're going to go to <clears throat> inputs. All right. And so for aileron, I'll show you. We're going to edit and scroll down. And we're gonna take this up to 40. All right, so these are, in essence, gonna be my high rates. We're gonna have, uh, in essence, our, our dual rates are 100, our expo is 40, and then what I'm gonna do is assign it to a switch. And I assign it to the B switch. So B up will be uh, exp or your, your, your um, high rate on ailerons. Okay, and we're gonna hit return, return. Okay, so now, now that we have our ailerons, uh, our high rate aileron set up with an expo 40 and a do rate of 100, we're going to go ahead and copy this line. So we're just going to enter in that line. We're going to scroll down and that copied that line from up above. Now what we'll do is edit this one. We're going to scroll down and we're going to change this to 85. So that's our dual rate right there. We're going to drop the expo a little bit. And then we're going to assign it to the B position, or the middle position of that B switch. And we're going to 
do the same thing uh, for our low rates. So again, enter on it, scroll down, and then long press to edit. And then we're gonna change this again. And I actually never used low rates on this, but it's just habit. Okay, and then switch. Okay, so now this is uh this is the neat thing about the, the transmitters is they, they give you feedback really quick. So you can see right now these bolded numbers. That means that's that's the, the input that's that's active right now, right? So our elevators at 100 percent the the or throttle and rudder, they're all bolted. But aileron is at the bolded one is at 70, right? If we can scroll off of that, we can see it's at 70. If I flip the switch, it shows now the 85% uh, percent dual rates are in effect. And then up, it's now 100. Okay, so I'm not going to go through the rest of them because they're, they're the exact same way. Okay, so the next one... The next step is to set up the stabilizer. Right, right now we are in AS3X mode, but we want we want uh, to have safe mode available as well. So let's go ahead and configure that. So we're still on the input screen. So let's go ahead and set up the input for here. It's on. The actual input is, uh, uh, or the channel that controls safe on this plane is channel 5, but the input actually doesn't have to match, uh, but it doesn't hurt that the, the input matches as well. So we're going to name this input as uh, stabilize, or S, S, A. Okay, and source is going to be this switch here. So switch E. Okay, so that is it. So we go ahead and exit out of here. So now we have now we have a, a stabilizer switch. All right, so now we're gonna scroll over to mixes. And we're going to send, or we're gonna channel, or we're gonna configure channel five to work on this. All right, so mix name, we're gonna go ahead and call it stable, or stay again. All right, and we're gonna hit return. And the uh, source is gonna be stab, or our input name stabilizer. Okay, and then that should do it. So now, if we switch, Let's see here if you can see that or not. Um, it's actually trying to it's trying to orient the craft right now. And if we turn it off, uh, well, there we go. So now we have our stabilizer configured, except I want it the other way. So currently, that's AS3X, and that is uh, safe. Well, I want to change that. So I'm going to go scroll over more. 
to channels. And I'm going to change the direction. All right, so now that's stay safe. And that's AS3X. All right, let's make this quit be beeping. Telemetry lost. All right. Telemetry recovered. Yeah, you heard it. It it gets telemetry. Okay, so now the next thing is lights, right? Well, if you have lights, so let's go ahead and configure that. And we're gonna go back to inputs, and we're going to. Create a new one. Oh, hold on. Back there. Okay, and we're gonna hit the source. We're gonna make the source this, our D button. Okay, that's it for that. We hit exit out, we get back to inputs. Now we go scroll over to mixes and we're gonna put it here on channel six because channel six controls the lights. All right. Mix name, we're gonna call this light. I always do that. I'm still not good at navigating with this button. Look at the scroll wheel. L I G H T. All right. Hit return to get out of that. Our source is going to be light. And then that's it. Okay, so now what should happen is when I hit my uh, D button, it should change the light pattern. So let's see. Yep, we reversed our... Now we go multicolor. All right, so that's that's there. All right, last thing, we want to configure our timer. So, for one, th one thing I like about this is I only want the timer to run whenever the throttle's going, or uh, and and the when I'm actually powering the motors. So we're gonna scroll over, or we're gonna hit model again. We're going to scroll over to logical functions. And this is like the simplest way I'll do it. I have other ways of doing uh, um, tracking this, but we want to do uh, this. Is, well, this is the absolute simplest. So I want to find, I want to have a condition where throttle. Our input throttle is greater than negative 99. 
Okay, now see, this is this is the cool part. Our logical function one right now, it's not active because our throttle is down. Um, but if I raise it up just a tiny bit, it goes bold, which means it's active. All right, but now that's not quite all I want, right? Because I want to make sure, like, if I have my throttle up, but my throttle cuts on, I don't want the timer going then. So we come down here and we do an AND switch. So I want to make sure that throttle cut is, is off. So away from me. So there, now we have uh, switch F is away. So now, <laughs> that was dumb. All right, but if, so it went live, the, the prop started spinning, but now if I do, oops. now if I cut off the throttle and I raise up, notice it doesn't go, it doesn't go uh, live. The motors aren't spinning or trying it to spin. All right. So now what we do, now that we have this logical function that tells us, yes, the, the throttle's on and the throttle cut is off. We go back over here and we scroll to the first page and we do timer. Okay, and we do on and we scroll all the way to the right, well, close to all the way. Okay, and we choose logical function one. So it's gonna be on when logical function is on. And we're gonna call this the flight timer, or FLT. All right, and um, we're gonna say five minutes. We're not gonna say persistent. And we're gonna, yeah, we're gonna do beeps, 20 seconds. All right, so the other cool thing about, about these uh, transmitters, if you're coming from Spectrum, is they have like persistent timers. So same deal. Uh, we're gonna say as long as L1 is active, this is gonna be our total timer. And this is gonna, this timer will keep track of all the all the time we've flown this particular model, which is really nice. It, it uh, helps you to understand which models are really your favorites. Okay, and it's gonna be persistent. And yeah, we're only gonna do, or we're gonna persist until we manually reset it. We're not gonna do any, uh, any other countdowns on it because it's gonna be counting up. All right, so go ahead. Telemetry lost. All right, so now uh, we're going to go right a little bit. So here's our. Yeah, I messed up on the spelling of flight timer. Okay, so right now I can, I can. Uh, push my throttle up and it doesn't start the timer because we're on throttle hold. If I push it away, time of one elapsed. All right. So let's go ahead and see did I set that wrong up or set that timer up wrong? 
Uh, start. Okay. All right, so that's fine. I think I just, it had been running in the background while I was doing other things. Okay, so now we do reset the flight timer. So now we're at five minutes. And as soon as I hit throttle cut, it cuts off the timer. All right, so this should be enough. You know, after you configure your elevators uh, and your rudder for uh, your different flight modes, uh, that should be enough. Um, the other thing I like to do, actually, and the reason why I put my lights on the D switch is actually most of my models are configured to use the A switch as a um, as a as a as a uh, panic button. So I'll show you how to do that real quick. So go back to model forward forward. There's so there's several different ways of doing this, right? Um, for for this kind of thing, I actually prefer special functions. All right, so we hit enter and it'll start flashing. It's waiting for an input. So we're gonna hit the A button. So when A is down, what we're gonna do, hit enter for that, we're gonna override channel and we're gonna, cha uh, we're gonna override channel five, which is our, our, uh, our safe, uh, or our AS3X safe mode. And we're going to, let's see here. Uh, we'll try 100 first and we're gonna check this box. This box means do it multiple times, not just one time. Uh, so like if I hit the save button several times during the flight, it will do it every time, not just the first time. Okay, so now if I go here, I'm gonna go return back and then I'm gonna scroll over till I get to the channels monitor. All right, so channel five is, is at negative 100 right now. Okay, so safe is actually away from, or uh, yeah, safe is away from me. And that means I need to send it channel five 100. Okay. AS3X is negative 100, safe is 100. So I need to go back and change that up. Hit model again, forward, 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 till we get to special functions. I'm gonna change this back to 100. Okay, so now that's that should, uh, well, let's go ahead and test it. Okay, we're gonna take ourselves out of safe mode. You heard the chirp, so that's safe mode. Non-safe mode, or AS3X mode. Yep, so when we, okay, we're in safe mode, we hit the button, it goes in to try and write itself. Okay, now that's kind of great, uh, but, you know, uh, you know, we kind of want some, some report that it's actually doing something. All right, so we hit return, 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 or in, as many times as we need to to get back out of that, and we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here. So we're going to assign another function to that same switch. And we're going to play track and we're going to use, oh, this is a long list. We're going to use our panic sound. Okay. 
Okay, so now, panic sound. So now when we hit AS3X, or with the, the panic button. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. All right. Now, the, I do the, the special functions are where you would also put up your voice reports for um, oh, high rates and low rates. So like, here's our, here's our uh, our rate switch so be uh, switch B away from us that's going to be uh, play track uh, it's going to be rates high high rate okay um, Hit return, and then, um, so you do the same thing for, you assign the other two switches, low rates and and uh, medium rates. Uh, same thing for uh, safe mode. So if we go to safe mode, switch E, uh, we're gonna switch this to play track. Um, Going to go back here. Safe mode enabled cream puff. All right. And oh, oh, you could do also the, you would set the same, the other switch, the other position of the switch for AS3X mode. All right, that should do it. Uh, you know, Feel free to leave any comments or any kind of uh, tips that you might have that you use whenever you bind the Radio Master to um, any uh, DSMX or Spectrum um, receivers. Uh, I I have not run into any issues so far using this with any of my Spectrum planes. Um, uh, oh, I will mention that um, it does pull in the telemetry, so if you exit out of this uh, we don't have any telemetry screen set up you do see we do get RSSI uh, it, and I will say you probably want to disable the RSSI alarms because since the telemetry is so um, weak on these you get a lot of warnings so let me show you where you would do that so go to model again and you're gonna go here uh, nope, sorry. You're going to keep going to the right uh, until you get to telemetry. Now, you can either lower these thresholds for this particular model, or you could disable them altogether. I typically disable them um, for the RSSI. I haven't had, I actually have had better luck with the Radio Master than I've had with my DX9. My DX9 would com would drop connection, or I'd get holds like every other flight on my Ultimate 3D. When I bound it up to the Radio Master, I haven't had experienced a single hold on this yet. So um, the other thing is, so so we have um, this does get telemetry. Obviously, the you heard that it gets RSSI but it also gets other things. So if you hit that select or discover new, it's gonna, it's gonna show you all of these different telemetry values. Now, there's some of these that make absolutely no sense. You don't know what this 002 means or 004, um, but then there's other ones that do make sense. Fades A, uh, uh, frame losses, holds, the I haven't figured out the difference between A2 and EVIN, um, but uh, this is hand. You know, you can you can uh, if you figured out what what these are for, then uh, you know you can use them to however you feel like you're using them. Uh, but let's go ahead and stop the discovery. 
So when, once you get those, so I, too, I do tend to like to watch the uh, fades and frame losses and holds. Um, and I have been known to uh, put an alarm on the EVIN when it gets down below a certain threshold. Uh, I'll tell it to, you know, I'll have it, I'll have it do a voice report to, uh, to that my battery's low. All right. Thanks again for watching and uh, be sure and leave a comment if you have one.